search detective, we have taken it even further to where Sherlock 2 is now going to be your personal shopper on the internet. And it's incredibly hot. And I'll show it to you in just a minute. So that's number one. Number two, we've gotten a lot of customers saying, you know, I live in a house and there's four or five of us that use the same Mac and you know, I don't want my kids looking at my files. I don't want my kids messing up my desktop. And, you know, I like to use a certain browser. They like to use another browser. I, I get tired of reconfiguring the machine every time I come back. I have certain preferences set. They have others. Mac OS 9 handles this completely automatically. You can set Mac OS 9 up to where you can log in. And once you log in, your desktop appears. Your files are secure from anyone else unless you volunteer to share them. All of your preferences are set for you the browser you like, the home page you like, just everything. And it's all automatic. Now, since you need a password, whether, it's in a, whether you're in a college dorm or whether you're at home or in a business, since you need a password, why not be able to use your voice? We have built in voice print passwording to Mac OS 9. Your voice is your password. On the Internet, on the Internet though, you know, one password doesn't get you very far, right? On the internet, you need a password for everything, it seems like. And, you know, to get into this server, to get into this service, passwords, they're like keys and they're falling out of our pocket. Well, what do we need? We need a keychain. We need a place to put all these keys so that when we unlock the keychain with our master password, it unlocks them all. And we don't have to deal with all those other passwords completely built in to Mac OS 9, a feature called the keychain. Next one, auto-updating. We like to come out with updates to our OS to make it even better, to add refinements to it between major releases, to fix drivers, as an example, from some of our third parties and ourselves. And we have added a feature now to Mac OS 9 where the OS can keep you up to date every single day if you want, so that you're always running the latest and greatest version of the OS, again, all automatically. Six, encryption. When you want to send files over the internet, you don't want just anybody to read them. We have built in full encryption into Mac OS 9, so you can take a file, encrypt it, decrypt it, send it over the internet using very powerful encryption technology, all built into OS 9. File sharing over the internet. As you know, Mac has file sharing now within a local work group, really powerful file sharing. Now, completely extended onto the internet, there are no boundaries. You can share files over the internet exactly the same way that you share files in a local area network. This is a biggie. For those of you that use AppleScript to automate publishing workflows, it's incredible what you can do, you know, in a local area network with multiple machines co coordinated through AppleScript. But what do you do if your service bureau is in New York? Well, you go out and buy OS 9 is what you do. Because now, those same things you can do on your local area network with AppleScript, you can do over the internet in a secure fashion with AppleScript built into OS 9. And lastly, a way to find some of those services out there, we built in a network browser so that you can find servers on the internet as easily as you can use a printer, a, as easily as you can use a, a printer browser to find printers on your local area network. All built into OS 9. And these are just nine of the over 50 features that we've got. And what we'd like to do now is show you a few of them. Phil? Hi again, Steve. We have here uh, Mac OS 9 running on a Power Mac. And I'd like to show you just briefly uh, three of the features that Steve introduced you to uh, with Mac OS 9. The first one, of course, is we're sitting here with multi-user log on and we can choose to log on with our voice or with a password, whichever we choose. Steve told you voice, your voice is your password. Now I have a demo in here I want to do. It's actually not in my area. It's in Steve's log on area. So I'm going to log on to that. So let me just log into Steve's area and uh, use my voice to log in. My voice is my password. Huh. I can't get in as Steve. Let me try to say just how you might say. My voice is my password. So this is a demo that hasn't gone awry. This is a demo of exactly what's supposed to happen. I've used my voice, 
standard microphone built into Mac OS 9 and try to log in as Steve, and of course it's seeing that I'm not Steve, and it won't let me get into his area. So Steve, if I could borrow your voice for a moment and show us how it's supposed to work when you log in with the proper voice. My voice is my password. Thank you. So as Steve logs in, it brings up his desktop, his application, his files, his preferences, unlocks anything he set up in his keychain to automatically unlock, all done with the simple power of using his voice. Now let me show you a second feature, and the most powerful one of all, Sherlock. As Steve told you, we've got the new Sherlock 2 that will be coming in Mac OS 9, and it takes Sherlock far beyond what we delivered with Mac OS 8.5. Now many of you probably are already using Sherlock in Mac OS 8.5, and you know just how it works. For those who haven't used it yet, I'll show you briefly how it works today. I can type in a, la a natural, natural request. Many of you know that it's the 30th anniversary of the Apollo uh, landing on the moon, Apollo 11 first landing on the moon, something I'm very interested in. Well, I'm going to type in that, that request. I want to find information on the internet about the Apollo 11 mission. I have, right down here in the window, a whole bunch of plugins for search engines, popular search engines around the web. I've selected AltaVista, Excite, InfoSeq, down below Lycos, and when I hit search, Sherlock sends that request out to all those search engines and starts gathering the results back to me all in this window. They're, they all start appearing that fast, real time over the internet, with all those search engines ranked by relevance to my request. So I don't have to go to all the different search sites. It comes right up here on top. I can scroll through by single click on one of them. It's going to tell me a short, brief description right there. If I double click, it launches my browser and brings me right to that web page with that page that I was searching for. I don't have to go through another engine, past the home page. I go straight to the information I want. Now, this is what millions of people are now using today, Sherlock, to find information on the Internet. But with Sherlock 2, we've created these channels along the top. And these channels allow you to search for different kinds of information. For example, I can search for people across industry standard LDAP servers on the Internet. I can search for news from news sites. I've selected CNET and CNN. Let's click search again, same search. Only now, instead of just generic information, I'm finding news about the Apollo 11 mission. It comes back, not only does it give it the name and the relevance, the ranking, but it will also give us the date because it's news and I want to know what's the latest news. Let's pick one right here. Oh, Apollo 11 experiments. Double click, launch my browser, right to the news page, and it tells us Sure enough, Apollo 11 experiments are still returning results. Right to the news, all in seconds, not having to work through all different search engines. But most powerful of all is the ability to have different shopping or e-commerce sites built into Sherlock 2. If I click my shopping basket, I see a few examples of these. Well, let's turn on Amazon Books, Music, Video, and Barnes and & Noble. And this time, let's look for anything, books, music, videos, that have to do with Apollo 11. Again, Sherlock sends out my request to the e-commerce sites and instantly starts getting back a list of things that meet the requirements of Apollo 11. I can now sort it by name, by price, by availability. It tells me what I can buy, when I can buy it, and how much it'll cost. It's never been any, any easier to find this stuff. Sort by name. Apollo 11 mission reports. Here's one from NASA, a mission report. Double click it, takes me right to Amazon.com, right to the page to purchase that book, and I can just put it in my shopping cart, order it, and go. So it's so easy to find e commerce sites and buy goods or services. Let's do one more shopping for Apollo 11. This time, I'm going to turn on Amazon Auctions and eBay, two very different auction sites. I'm going to click search. And now I'm going to find collectibles, not books or videos, but collectibles out there on the Internet. Again, it comes back right away from those sites, gives me the price, the availability. Let's look by price. That's the cheapest thing I can buy. I'm a pretty cheap guy. Apollo 11. Right here, I can buy a 1969 National